It's gonna be fun. Far right. Okay, so Straight you're, you're black man never wear pink or none of that. Okay, that wasn't <laughs> what I. That's, it's not what you. I'm telling you, guys like me certify straight black men that don't wear pink and don't fall into none of the liberals narrative. When you see me, District 12, I want you to look it up, Baltimore City, Eugene Boycott. You see this hat, right? From the streets of Baltimore, my name is still out there because you know what? Y'all may, I'm not, I'm going to be fair. The dem are rats. Dem are rats as a straight black man made me. They created me. A straight father. I, all I was was a father. And I saw what they do to hardworking black men. See, I never played into the political game. I became the man that I needed. I became the representative. You see that energy you feeling right now? That's called an alpha. When an alpha, when a real man stand in front of you, I don't care how five, six I am, you will feel a certain energy that goes through you that is not of a this type thing. <laughs> This brother about to get, you, listen, bro, you about to get ate up by the LBAQBs, bro, the LBGs. You Relax. <laughs> also, man, I got me a, I got a pink, uh, I got some pink slacks that, that look bomb, bro. I love them. That, I got some pink slacks that I wore with some, with a blue shirt and some, and some loafers to my daughter's graduation. Man, please. Them joints was them joints was hitting. And I got a and I had a pink button up, a polo, a pink um, polo button up long sleeve joint that I used to rock with some blue jeans and some red shoes and a blue jacket. Man, what? You gotta know how to hook it up, man. Like you, 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 you all in your mind talking about I ain't wearing pink because that's gonna make you that's gonna make you feel all sassy, huh? Huh? See that that your mindset, brother. Your mindset. But finish to finish doing your thing because you're on point talking about them demo rats. You will feel that. That's the black power of the black man. But they have degraded us for many years. They have ignored us. B O R K A I. That's an African name. So anybody on the liberal side, right, that like to call himself. African American, I can give you the direct descendant of my father that held that name with pride to see my father in heaven looking at his son on his knees saying why why y'all doing this to my legacy you know what the rats told me i want sh i want nothing you don't have to keep it but i'll put this on record they woke me up they made me district 12 hardest district i don't see you know what it is to see a man a black man walk into another black man, blow his brain out. Do you know what that feel like? I will never know that. You you don't want to know that, all right? The only, the close. Bro, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. You are all over that place. I'm trying to listen to you. I, I really am. I am trying to listen to my brother, not because he's black, but simply because he has a message. He has a serious message. And his message is, I actually enjoy seeing black guys tell the Democrats what they really think about them because the Democrats feel like we owe them something. They actually do. They feel like we owe them something. As a matter of fact, other black people who are Democrats feel like any black person that steps against the Democrats are fools, are sellouts, aren't for black people. That's what they're. That's how they're looking at Candace and any other black person who's who's uh, conservative, not realizing that those black individuals are for black people more than the than the Democrats are. But this brother is doing a whole lot. You're absolutely right, Lisa Marie. You are absolutely right. He is doing a lot, and I'm trying to see if he can make some sense out of one of his statements. He won't even say pry. Fill it with pry. What is pry? You still got two letters, two letters, the D and the E to finish out the word. Say pride. It don't take a whole lot, bro. I get it if you're country and you're not country. You're from Baltimore City. People in Baltimore City say pride. You can't even say that because what? It make you feel some type of way. Pride. Fill me with pride. What you mean with pride? You sound like one of them collard green cornbread eating 
pastors that that just ah, and yeah, and I'm going to tell you ha, that if you're Lord, ha, you better praise him. Ha, you better give me ha, all your money ha, if you want to give in the heaven. Ha, because the only way ha, you're getting in the heaven ha, is to give me your money. Ha. Bruh. We have been teaching people how to grow online. It's been absolutely amazing. We have three people who have been able to reach monetization in less than 30 days. Growing YouTube channels, some from zero people. We have one guy who had two subscribers before he started working with me. He started helping him. His views went up 4.8 million percent. We're super excited. If anybody ever want to grow on YouTube, you reach out to me with the word coach. Enunciate, all right? Represent. Please do that. You can still be passionate and, and get that alpha energy across, but you're doing too much right now, trying to get that alpha energy across. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be honest with you. If you got to try that hard to get that alpha energy across, you ain't got it in you, bro. You ain't got it in you. You're lying to yourself and you doing something that people call is, is a saying that says uh, fake it to make it is what you're doing. You're faking like you got that alpha dog in you so that you can. You, uh, most alphas don't say that they're alphas. Most alphas don't say I'm giving you that alpha energy. What you're feeling is alpha. That's what you're feeling, ain't it? Ain't it what you're feeling? That's what you're feeling. Nah, it's, it's ignorance what I'm feeling. It's someone that's all over the place with mumble and jumble. Like, this this brother does not represent me based off of how he's speaking so far. I'm sorry. He just don't. Yeah, I'm, I, listen, I'm trying to be honest with y'all. I don't say shoot out. District talk. Look it up. Baltimore City. Black right. everything that's from there. Black everything. And they always claiming the system. Who the system went everything? You run. When do we stop that? When do we start paying attention to black men like me? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm just a reporter here asking okay, questions, so, ask so question. I want to ask a little bit about what you heard tonight and how you think that can move your community, because there are a lot of people that are skeptical, too. Okay, let me tell you how he's moving, truly moving my community, right? I Bruh, please answer the question. He's about to tell, <laughs> he's about to answer how it's moving. <laughs> I don't think he's going to answer it. But I'm going to give him a try. <laughs> I don't wear pink. What? I'm from the 90s and the 80s. We set things. We set boundaries from the founders, right? Hold on. Hold on, bro. <laughs> How the hell are you getting to not wearing pink? Hold on one second. Right? I hold on one second. And move your community because there are a lot of people that are skeptical too. Okay, let me tell you how he's moving. Truly moving my community. Right? I don't wear pink. Bro, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how it's move in my community. First of all, I don't wear pink. <laughs> we got that on the record? We got to have that part on the record. I ain't wearing no pink. All right? And I don't wear prophylactics. Pink was identified for girls. Blue was for boy. That set boundaries. You understand? I'm glad I'm wearing blue. So that's just symbolic, right? When Tupac and Biggie died from my culture, I saw the switch goes over. These people literally say they would de-emasculate the black man. And I've seen it. I live in District 12. I'll keep on repeating this again. Eugene Boycott, you can look it up. I'm not pretending because you see this cowboy hat. I actually own acres after I got out of the rat. So I'm not pretending about this right here. That's within generations. But when I lived in Baltimore City, that I am traumatized forever. I don't know how to deal with anything that's liberal. What would it mean then if, if Donald Trump were to lose again for, for the country, for you, for the community? But what would that mean? What would that mean? Look what you got now. Tell me something you got now. No, seriously. Well, I'm, not, I'm, what, I'm just asking you. Four years more of the nonsense that's going on. I mean, is that hard? Tell, tell me about that. And can you be specific about what you interpret as nonsense okay. now? I live in Baltimore City. Dem are rats, a democratic dominated state. I have never, I'm speaking on first hand. I've seen, a, I know three bloods 
You hear me? Bloods member under Donald Trump, not Barack Hussein Obama. He tossed us to the side when black people didn't believe I was one of those people I was meeting in the mall trying to get this man. Why? Because my family from Africa and he had an African father. You know the guy that they ignore, but the white mother that they bring forward, but he's the black savior of the whatever community. I don't believe in them. I'm putting them on record. I'm not afraid of them. They want to bring the smoke. Well, if they, know, the gay community, you don't, I don't believe. I don't care about them. I don't. I, I recognize gay and lesbian. Anything other than that, effery. I pause on that. Tell them to bring it. Anything other than that's effery. When I went to college, when you say a plus, that means you can add anything you want to in that. Right or wrong. It's not a minus. That means that any sexual thing you want to add, you can add it into it. It's an open door. So I'm going to leave that. This, I don't know why in the hell he keep bringing up the fact that he don't wear pink. Brother, that means not a thing, all right? Baltimore City, District 12, my name is everywhere. Who cares? Who cares? Stay on topic. Like, discuss the matter. You have an opportunity right now to really bring the, you know, bring it home. Express to these individuals who pulled up to you with a microphone why you vote the way you vote and why you don't. Not that I don't wear pink. And that when it comes to the LGBs, only thing that's important to you are the are the gays and the lesbians and everything else you don't care about. Tell them to bring you the smoke you want to smoke. Who cares? <laughs> and listen, I know, I know. Listen, I, okay, let me just be quiet, man. I know I'm starting something right now. But we can play a drinking game for how many times this brother says, I don't wear pink. What the hell does that have to do with anything? I guess that's how he drives his point home with homosexuality because boys wear blue and girls wear pink. Bruh, that is the most grade school reason for boys to be boys and girls to be girls that I've ever heard in my life. That's because when we were little, girls wear pink and boys wear blue. Okay, and? <laughs> Leave that alone, but if they want to tell them to bring it, I don't wear pink. Now let's talk about the community in which I've seen. When President Trump was there, I've seen three bloods, literally, I'm not making this up, three bloods member got a job under Trump. My ex-girlfriend before I met my wife couldn't have a job before. I was with her three years prior. When Trump came in there, all of a sudden the door started to open. She got a job. To this day, she still have the job. I've seen numerous blacks. Those was just the four people that was like beat down that didn't have a job. But other than that, the black community, District 12, I've seen climbing people actually getting job. The HBNU, I'm by Morgan State. Morgan State ain't never built. My mama, my mama. I got two mother African mothers, by the way. My mama works there. I pause. The, and they started building. Barack Hussein Obama didn't do that. He ain't opened doors for the black community. He opened door for the plus. He opened door for the plus. That means wherever you want to act sexually, do it. And I'm going to speak it again. And I, wherever, if you want to keep this or if you want to delete it, I ask anybody, bring rappers. Be, I'm ready for this. When I take this off, I'm ready for battle because I'm proving what a true black man is. Don't wear pink. Stand on the ground. I mentor young kids. You know what I teach them? To build. I teach them to be men. If you ain't a man to, first you become a man. That's how you raise your family. Don't think stepdad or this you think husband and father when you teach the young kids that you start eliminating some of the problem see they beat us the liberals like to beat us up i don't hate gay or lesbian everything else i'm not gonna recognize because it's irrelevant i don't hate white people or black people i just deal with the trauma i've been through and i try to save others for it you understand me Completely. So that community have, the, they took me, I'm the perfect example, where they literally told me, I had an a, a election infection a, a, a official, told me, for me standing up for fathers, all these allegations are putting against me, and I just, my daughter just wanted to be with me. They said, I don't exist.
because they promote single mother. That's where the money comes from in Baltimore City. It's federal funding and state funding. Real men that never cause any harm. We get pushed to the side. Do you think that's fair, son? I'm asking you what have they done for the black community besides opening up single momhood, besides opening up the sexual predatorial state of mind that is declining the United States of America. I hunt with a lot of white guys. I got a lot of black guys all of a sudden they hunt and I never knew this because we never really discussed it. As men, we get together, we hunt. And it's just a bonding thing. We connect with one another. I have no problem with listening to the brother, but the more I listen to this brother, let me tell you something. My pastor, Reverend Dr. Alton Wayne Jordan of Crusaders Baptist Church on 8th and I Northeast, Washington, D.C., always said this one thing. My mama used to tell me this. This is what my pastor used to say. My mama used to tell me this. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, just say amen. <laughs> so that said, amen, brother. <laughs> amen. Because I ain't got much nice to say about the way that he presents himself. I do understand. Um, let, me, let me just say this. I do understand where he's coming from. He, he communicates a little differently. He communicates a little differently. I don't know this diff I don't know the situation between him, he and his baby mom's ex-wife, his daughters, any of that. I don't. I do know what the Democrats' plan was to separate black households. I do know that. And it's been working. But here's the thing with plans. I want to tell y'all this. This is here's the thing with plans. Other people's plans have nothing to do with you unless you play along. I'm going to let you know that again. Other people's plans, if it includes you, have nothing to do with you unless you play along. Now, if you want to play the game that they are proposing, then yes, you're going to fall victim to their plan. You're going to be caught in their trap. But you don't have to play along. How about courting a woman? How about not getting her pregnant until you know that that's the one? Until y'all are locked in, married, ready to start a family, ready to build a family, ready to grow a family. Not saying that marriage is all marriages work. That's la la land. I'm just saying. That's we already know that. That's a fairy tale right there. That all marriages will work. All right. And some people don't deserve to be married. I know some women who don't deserve to have no husband. And I know some men who don't deserve to have no wife. Period. But that said, if you go and do that adult thing and you create some kids and you just so happen to be under a system that targets black individuals or poor individuals or certain individuals in certain communities and you fall into their trap that's on you that's on you maybe i'm maybe i'm a little pig-headed or cold-hearted when it comes to that but that's on you we all have our stuff we all have our own hell nobody is going through anything more than the other person i do realize that some people have a a better upbringing but people who have great upbringings all have their own stuff that they're dealing with my children, they were raised way differently than me and my wife were raised. They were raised with a mom and a dad in the house. They were raised with a mom and a dad in the house who had jobs and careers. They were raised in a house that their parents owned. They were raised by parents who not only went to church on Sundays, but took them with them every single time. And encourage them to be involved in the church as well and encourage them to build their own relationship with God aside from church and aside from us. So our upbringing was extremely different. But for me to act as if their uh, head start or their blessings of having all those things I just now said mean that they don't have their own stuff in their life, that would be false. Everybody got their own stuff. And sometimes we create our own hell by not recognizing what's detrimental to us and our own growth and leaning more into it rather than turning away from it. And sometimes we lean more into that BS that's bad for us and we fall prey to the darkness that's out there in the world. And if you do things God's way, you will realize that we are the light in the darkness. We're not supposed to go that way. You know what I mean? Be not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the word that comes from God's mouth. You know what I mean? 
be ye transformed, we got to change. We got to improve. That's why it makes no sense to me that in ministry, I had to, I, I used to be heavy in ministry. But one thing I didn't understand was why people can continue to be in ministry and they aren't even trying to change for God. They're saying, no, God made me who I am and I'm just going to be this. If I'm going to be a whoremonger, I'm going to be that. If I'm going to be, if, if they're going to be homosexuals, they, they I ain't changing. You know, I'm just going to be that. God knows my heart. God, God know I'm not perfect. Whatever. And these people will be in ministry and they never have any plans on changing whatsoever or improving or getting rid of that sin that they know God frowns upon. They can care less about it. But this guy, I'm going to let you know this right now, and I know I'm rambling, but this guy is extremely emotional. You're far too emotional to be an alpha. I do realize that you're teaching children how to be men. You found some success in life. You have acres of land. You are doing it thing bro like we, we're covering your videos you're doing the thing congratulations but you're super emotional you are too emotional to call yourself an alpha if that mean anything and guess what i don't even buy into the alpha and beta male type of thing people are people people are people right that's it god sets the laws but the laws that we follow are the standards we follow certain ridiculous standards that are set by society that mean absolutely nothing to me. Like pink is for girls, blue is for boys. I get it. I get it because I've raised my boys the same way. But I was pig-headed. I was pig-headed. Boy, you better not cry. Stop crying. You sound like a... Because that's how I was brought up. But when we know better, we do better, right? That's the saying. That's, that's something that they say, right? If you knew better, you do better. Yeah, when you know better, you do better. You know what I mean? So you can't raise little boys to teach them how to be men and you're telling them don't you ever wear no pink that's what girls do don't you sit down that's what girls do don't you chew with your mouth closed that's what girls do you know what i mean so yeah there's some things that girls do but come on it's not pink and blue but anyway i i digress all right let's let's get back into the 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 rest of the genius that comes from this gentleman from District 12 of Baltimore City. About your sensitivity in a manly area. You understand me? Special op. When we have dangerous jobs that needs to be done, you know, it's guys like me that's patriot that will go in there and put their life on the line to be away from my wife. I have a newborn son to be my way away from. If that president right there, Trump call upon me right now and say, boost up Eugene Boycott, I will fight for him. I will die for this country. I will put leaving my son alone on the life. You know why? Because I believe in his leadership and I believe in the bigger picture. So if uh, President Biden were to say that to you, you would hell say Hell no. Right now, I'm prepping up my son that he will not, he will not. And my son's, my other one is 25. I would not recommend him to go fight for nothing because what are we promoting in this country right now? Trans people, if when wartime come, is that's who? There's a thing called reality where there's a real threat out there in the United States. You, real threats. You understand me? Me and you, brother, we are brothers, like it or not, because we are on the same soil. You hear me? Hey, <laughs> Tater Hunter. I don't know if I'm Ty to Hunter or Tater Hunter. I, I agree. <laughs> hey, and I agree with that too, Lag78. His wife probably like, listen, I hope somebody call you to go fight for him because I need some time away from you. This, he's, he sound like he is too much for anybody. <laughs> We can agree uh, to disagree, but when the, when the thing hits the fan, you got somebody, the kids injecting themselves with that. Can you, can you survive the battlefield without getting your hormones and all that? Is that are those the people that are going to fight the war? See, I look at things at the long term. When you put those people in the line there, right, are they going to survive the war when we have a cold war or anything like that? We have to face some tough enemy trying to be a man or trying to be a woman, something that nature never called for. You could do whatever you want, but that's reality check. It's called national security. And the president just said it himself. If other countries don't believe in you, they're sitting back and watching. They will bomb us like they did Ukraine and all that. That's, we're a couple of votes away from that. 
You, 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 you ever seen Ukraine and them when, the, when you, any war, when you see the bomb, who do you ever see grabbing the kids and doing things? Men. 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 You see men. When you see women, they cry. You see men have to pick up the, 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 the pieces. So all I'm saying is this. Bruh, what the hell are you talking about? What? When you see women, they're crying. They're not. Women are fighting too. Women are fighting for their kids. Women are dying for their kids. Women go to battle very quickly for their cubs. Like if uh, some of the most dangerous animals in the world <laughs> are afraid of the female. Like when you look at the lion, same thing. When you look at anything, like these women are going hard for their kids, man. I do realize what he's saying. He's, he's, he believes that men play a role. And I honestly think something's, I, I, I know that he has a message and maybe I'm missing it. I know he has a message, but I don't think he knows how to say it. He needs a little bit of coaching on how to say it. What do you mean I need coaching on how to say it? I, I got, I teach boys how to be men and I teach this person and he probably does. And I'm sure they sit there and, and, and look at him just as confused as I'm looking at him. If, if that makes any sense, because this brother is, he's all over the place. He sound like a black hillbilly. You're like, oh man, that's racist calling him black hillbilly. No, 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 no. The way hillbillies are portrayed on TV, that's the only thing I know about hillbillies. That's it. And I can barely understand them when they're talking. Sure, y'all know better, so feel free to let me know whatever y'all want me to know. But when I listen to this brother right here, I'm not hearing anything that I understand. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decode his, his, his verbiage as he speaks, because the guy with the microphone knows that he is getting some comedic gold here. I can actually see. And I don't even look at Saturday Night Live anymore. But I can see this right here turning into a Saturday Night Live skit. How do you feel about Trump? I don't wear pink. Like, you know what I mean? That's It has it written all of his comedy. This brother with the microphone is getting nothing from him. Men. 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 You see men. When you see women, they cry. You see men have to pick up the, 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 the pieces. So all I'm saying is this, this is the greatest country in the world, the, diff, the, the greatest Republican. But understand this, we have to think rational. We have to be respectable to guys like me. I'm not hateful, but you know what? When you start breaking the man from his family and making us feel less than, then you are killing the animal instinct in us to die for our country we're facing right now. Going to Baltimore, I got go? the hell out of Where there. I graduated. Pennsylvania. Right. I live in a far right place. Know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. That was a lot. I get it. <laughs> y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on all my other videos inside of the playlist, watching them bad boys liking them, sharing them, commenting, and being respectful to those inside of the comment sections who are a little feisty and don't understand how to have objective conversations without yelling and being super emotional, okay? Because some people just like to argue so that they are heard. And when you speak your part, when you start to explain something to them, they're just listening to respond. They're just waiting for you to shut up because they got some fire, <laughs> They got some fire that they can't wait to put on you. <laughs> oh, man, I shouldn't be laughing at these people, but it is what it is. Love y'all, man. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.